All right then gang, so in this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about form validation, but what do I mean by that? Well, by form validation, I mean we need to validate the data that a user enters into this form after they click submit. Because if you think about it, a user could just type in a name here, not an email. They could leave this blank and leave this blank, click submit, and then we've got that data. We need to say, hey, we want to check this data. Is it the correct type? And have you actually entered in something at all? So that's what we're going to do. Now, we could use HTML5 validation on the front end, such as using the required attribute on our input fields or by using input types. And that's always a good idea to do as well. But in this lesson, I want to focus on server side validation using PHP. So once the form is submitted, the data is sent to the server, the file runs and the data from the form is validated in PHP code up here. Now, this is always a good step to take as well as front end validation to make sure that the data you use in your app or save to a database is correct and it's the expected data. OK, so we do receive an email when we want one. We do receive ingredients, etc. So then, first of all, we're checking if the form has been submitted and we have data. That's the first step. Right. And then in here at the minute, we're just echoing this stuff to the browser and we're escaping any kind of malicious code using this function right here. HTML special chars. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is check that all of these fields right here are not empty. They all have to have something in them. OK, so we need to see if those are empty. What I'm going to do is just comment this stuff out for a minute and we're going to do several different if checks, one for each form field. So I'm going to say check email, first of all, that's a little comment so we know what everything is as we do it. And here I want to do an if check and I'm going to use a function called empty, right? And then I'm going to pass in to this function dollar sign underscore post and I want to get the email field. So I'm checking if this field is empty. If it's empty, it means there's nothing in it. The user's not typed anything. And if that's the case, we want to echo some kind of error because they have to type something. So we'll echo an email is required. And then we'll also echo a BR tag as well. OK, so we're checking if the email is empty. If it is, then we're going to echo this error saying it's required else. This means it's not empty and it's fine. So in this case, we're just going to echo what the user types in for the email. So let's cut that from there and paste it down here. Does that make sense? If it's empty, then we want to send back an error. If it's not empty, then that's fine. And we'll just send back what they typed in just as confirmation for now. So we'll do this kind of check for each different field. So I'm going to copy that, paste it a couple more times. We're going to check the title right here. And we need to check the title field over here. And then we'll change this to a title is required. Oops, like so. And otherwise, if it has been entered and it's not empty, we'll just echo out the title from the post array. And then finally, we want the ingredients. And we'll say at least one ingredient is required if it's empty. And if it's not empty, then we'll just echo out those ingredients instead, just for confirmation. OK, so we'll just do a little comment right at the end as well. Let me delete these. We don't need those at the top anymore. We're going to do a little comment right here just so we know that this is the end of the post check right here. OK, so then I'm going to save that and I'm going to give this a whirl and hopefully it should work. Now, if I submit without entering any information, we can see an email is required, a title is required, at least one ingredient is required. So we'll enter in an email. We'll say yoshi at the net ninja.co.uk, then submit. And now we just get these two errors, but we also get the value right here. So this is valid. We've successfully entered something in. It might not be fully valid. We've not checked that it's actually an email and we could just as easily type Yoshi here, submit it. And that would say, yeah, it's valid. But at least it has a value, whereas these two don't. If I type in the pizza title, just call it title, then you can see an email is required. We get title and then at least one ingredient is required. We can do the same thing here. In fact, what I'm going to do is just a load of stuff like that. 
submit it all, and we don't get any errors. We just get a combined uh, load of junk, which is all of the values together, okay? So that's the first step of our basic validation. We've checked that those fields have actually got something in them, but we need to do a bit more. We need to check that this is actually an email, okay? And not just some random string of letters. We need to check maybe that this is a title, maybe a bit looser validation on that, but we need to check that this is a comma separated list of ingredients and that could be tricky as well. So what we're gonna do is use filters and a bit more validation in the next tutorial to do that. And I wanna warn you, I am gonna be using a bit of regex to do this. Now, you don't need to know regex. I'm gonna give you the regex codes to verify these different things. But if you want to learn about it, I do have a whole tutorial series on regex on this very channel. So the link will be down below in this video and the next video as well. So you can check that out there. 